Okay, I'm going to go over a concept here which relates to vector calculus involving vector fields that are curl free. And I'm making a statement here uh, at the, on the top line here, which is something that I believe that you know, but that is if the curl of A is equal to zero, then contour integrals of that vector field are path independent. Are path independent, okay? And so what I've done here is I've drawn my two points, A and B, which are the end points of that contour integral. And I've imagined there is a contour that I'm calling gamma one or contour one from A to B. That I've just drawn out there again. And then a second contour from A to B, which is a different contour and I'm calling that gamma two. And I'm defining this quantity I1 as the contour integral from A to B of A dot DL on that first contour here. And I2 is the contour integral of A dot DL from A to B on contour two here. And what I'm gonna do is ask you to consider the quantity I1 minus I2. Okay, that is I1 minus I2. Now, if I look at that, again, I've got my first point, my contour 1, my first point, and my contour 2. Gamma 2. And then this is my start point for my contour integration, my end point for my contour integration. And I'm looking at I1 minus I2, which is the integral from A to B of A dot DL on contour one minus the integral from A to B of A dot DL on contour two. And if I have minus a definite integral, I can make that a plus the same integral, but with the endpoints reversed, right? So I take the endpoint and make it the beginning point of the beginning point and making it the end point. And so I can say that this then becomes, according to that, the integral from A to B of, of um, A dot DL on contour one plus the integral from B to A of A dot DL. And so just to, just to kind of look at what we're doing here now, this first contour integral is the integral from A to B on the first contour. And this second contour integral is the integral from B to A on the other contour. And so the sum of this contour integral plus this contour integral is a closed contour integral, an integral on a closed contour. And so I can rewrite this as I1 minus I2 is equal to the integral of A dot DL, but on that closed contour, but we have the curl, well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll not do, do that right, go that route just yet. And I can use Stokes' theorem I can use Stokes' theorem to write that as the integral of curl of A dot DA on any surface bounded by, by that closed contour. And so this, that equal, the, it, it, the contour integral being equal to that surface integral of the curl, that's from Stokes' theorem, something that you, you, you really need to have in your back pocket at all times is Stokes' theorem. 
And then, but, but I have the curl of A is equal to zero. Okay? And so, therefore, if the curl of A is equal to zero, I1 equals I2. What that means is the contour integral, is that the integral along contour 1 from A to B is equal to the integral along contour 2 from A to B. And since I haven't said anything about the contours, that means this, this is general. So contour integrals are path independent if curl of A is equal to zero. Okay? So, going on to the next point here, I'm going to make a second statement, and that is if the curl of A is equal to zero, then, then I can represent that, that vector A as the gradient of some scalar function. I can find some scalar function, in fact, an infinite number of scalar functions, but some scalar function whose gradient gives me the vector field A. And so how do I know this? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to start off with, um, with uh, asking you to consider this function I've written down capital F of R, which is a contour integral of A, where it's a contour from some starting point, R0, which means it's just like 1, 2, 3, or 0, 0, 0, or whatever, to an end point, which is R, which is where all of the functional dependence for this function F of R is in the upper limit of this integral. And where by R, I mean the, the vector X, Y, and Z, right? It's just a position in three-dimensional space. And then what I'm going to do is ask you also to consider the first partial derivative of F with respect to X. And I'm going to write down that that is equal to the limit as H goes to zero of F of x plus h, y, z, minus f of x, y, z, over h. Now, again, we're, you know, we're not, we're not a math class, and so the rigor here is lacking, but what I'm going to do is going to forget about this limit for now and just say that, you know, I, I'm relating... I'm imagining H is very, very small, and uh, that I can work with, you know, in a, in a place where H is not zero, but it's very small. And so I can treat this as more like an algebraic relationship. And then I can rewrite this. If I'm doing that, I can rewrite this as H di F di X is equal to F of X plus H Y Z minus F of X Y Z. Okay, so again, and I've written this down here again. So this this is this is now meant to be a relationship um, that I can work with algebraically, and then later I you know I can take the limit if I want to. But really, you'll see how this works. Again, I, I just th I'm just thinking about h being very very small. So what I'm going to do is write down h di f di x is equal to the integral from the starting point to R, sorry, um, not to R, yeah. from, from the starting point to the point X plus H, Y, Z, A dot DL, minus the integral from that starting point A dot DL, integral of A dot DL. And you know that, that um, I can flip 
you know, you, you know, I, I, you, you'll you'll know this from uh, basic calculus that if I integrate from x naught to a, subtract from that the integral from x naught to b, that becomes the integral from b to a, um, you know, of f dx, right? And I can do the same thing here and rewrite this as the following: the integral from x y z to x plus h y z a dot dl okay and so what what are we doing here like what, what i'm what i'm doing here is now i've got a contour integral and that contour integral goes from one point to another point where this point is x y z and this point is x plus h y z now i want to just Say and also remember that the curl of A is equal to zero, right? And that's that's in, in fact, if you think about it, that's the only reason why I can have this function f of of r, uh, because because it, it doesn't depend. You know, there, there's no dependence on the path that I take that contour integral along. And so I can what I'm what I'm saying is I can take this contour integral along this contour. I could take this contour integral along this contour. I could take it along this contour, and they give the same value for each of those contour integrals. But in fact, the one I'm interested in here is I'm actually, even though this is perfectly general, I'm free to pick the contour that I integrate along. And for this, what I'm going to do is pick the contour um, that follows the x-axis from the one point to the other, that distance, is h and then on this path dl is equal to dx times x hat and a dot dl is equal to ax dx right so i'm going to follow this path and i'm looking at this integral here and so what I'm going to do is, is go to the next page here. And what I have is, let's make sure I get this right. I get h di f di x is equal to the integral from x, y, z to x plus h, y, z of ax dx. Now, if and that's going from to x plus h, y, z, following a contour along the x-axis. And that distance, that distance, is h now and if i make if I, if i make h really small then this function ax in the integrand does not change much So with this kind of, you know, and you, you, you get the hang of this as you go on, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write the following down. H di F di X is equal to AX times the integral from X to X plus H DX. And this integral, this integral here, is equal to h. And so what that tells me is h di f di x is equal to h a x or di f di x 
is equal to AX. Now I can do the same thing for di I can do the same I can do the same thing for di F di Y and di F di Z. And what I end up with is the following. So I've started, I've got this function f of r is equal to the integral from r naught to r um, a dot dl and di f di r, di x rather, is equal to ax di f di y is equal to a y and di f di z is equal to a z and that tells me that the gradient of f is equal to a okay and so i started out by asserting that if the curl of a vector field is equal to zero then that that vector field is the gradient of some scalar and it's more than that, I actually know what that scalar is. This works out to be, I think it's the second fundamental theorem of vector calculus. But that, that or it's related to the second fundamental theorem of vector calculus at least, but that, that function um, is equal to this contour integral. And you'll recognize this, for instance, if we're talking about the electric field, this quantity here is the negative of the electric potential. Uh, right, this, this, this function is the negative of the electric, like, electric potential, okay? And so, and so this is something you've used and you've done before, but this is perfectly general, and that is provided provided curl of A is equal to zero. And this is something we're going to use over and over again. I'm not going to make you regurgitate this, this um, this derivation on a test, but I think it's good to work through this a few times and to see where this comes from and to see that this is actually, it's actually quite rigorous if you follow it through. And I will see you guys in class tomorrow.